any time in the past my first question would be within this group is there anyone who has gone through uh, this particular course in the past anyone who has uh, you know seen what cp1 is yeah appeared for it kisi ke paas koi bhi background information working non working it's it's basically for both more likely possibly it's going to be for working folks i just want to get some idea kya kisi ne pehle attempt kiya hai ya at least has gone through or has some idea or has had some form of discussion about uh, you know this particular subject okay so one thing is constant that you guys uh, nobody at least has said so far that you guys have gone through cp1 or at least you know know some background information about it uh, so great to hear uh, half of the folks are working half are non working nobody has seen what cp1 is in the past and uh, while we are taking this particular session there are a few myths surrounding cp1 we'll uh, crack each and everything as we kind of go ahead uh, just to set context uh, want to give you this heads up that uh, i want to keep it uh, quick simple don't want to spend a lot of time uh talking mostly about basics uh, don't want to waste uh mine or your time for that matter uh, talking about things which is not going to help the cause or you know add any sort of value within that uh, a few things that i want you guys to understand is so the structure would be ki main aapko pehle batana chahta hu ki what the course is like i just want to give some sort of idea about what they expect out of you within cp1 what is the basic reading what is the basic material that you would uh, be required to cover going forward i'll give you guys a hint a glimpse about basically aaj ke time pe both the institute what is it that they are actually asking right so that of course is the thing that we want to cover agar aap logo ne if anyone has gone through those two questions those two are actually very recent question the last term itself last not this april term uh, but the september term so those two questions are actually questions that had come in the last term itself the reason i gave those questions are because number one they are seemingly very easy but very difficult to get marks on uh, and number two that is the kind of you know direction and directional if i may put it that way where you know both the institutes are kind of heading towards because at least for ifoa it's an open book uh, uh, exam right so you have the book open right in front of you uh, but still it it's it's kind of challenging for a lot of people uh, when they go through this particular content so a thought process kya hai that is what we'll try to cover next i call those cp1 traps because you'll find a lot of the questions that come on cp1 are in a way one way or the other they have some sort of traps uh built within them which is very difficult to decipher that comes as a uh, function of practice that will be the second thing that we'll be discussing and uh, towards the end i'll open the forum i'll ask a lot of uh, I'll, i'll open the forum for any sort of questions that you guys may have a few questions i think jo aap logo ne group mein dala tha i'll try and cover most of that uh within the discussions itself uh but towards the end if there's anything unanswered would we'll be more than happy to address uh, each and every one of that right So let's start with basically what CP1 is all about. So अगर आप कोर्स के हिसाब से देखते हो, CP1 lies somewhere exactly in between, uh, you know that entire spectrum. कि आपका CT series, old CT या मतलब CS, CM. Uh, once you're done with that, the next thing, at least level wise, it's CM, uh, CP1, CP2, CP3. Then you have SP level papers and then SA level papers, right? So actually, I would say that the reason why it's kept over there uh, is basically that ये एक foundational paper है. which sets the foundation for you to be able to you know do well with the incremental or papers that you are going to be go ahead go, uh, going ahead with it doesn't really require you to have a specialized knowledge of each and every field for that matter matlab you can basically appear for it even without uh, having any uh, uh, let's just say background information even as a student for that matter or you can also appear for it while you have you know done with your ct le, uh, level papers you're actually in a working category and at that particular point of time aapko lagta hai ki you know this is going to be your first foundational paper because a lot of learnings from this paper is going to be applied towards uh, uh, later on papers as well so some basic uh, information or some basic background i would say is definitely a prerequisite when you're appearing for cp1 really freshers let's just say someone who has just done nothing or someone who has just done cb1 and cb2 i don't really expect those kind of folks to be able to appear for cp1 uh, because a lot of information is required having said that e agar aap logo ne questions dekha hoga it is not something like your cm1 cm2 or cs1 cs2 jahan question paper agar aapne without any background information if you look the look at the question paper you will be taken aback kyunki वहां पे क्या हो रहा है आपको वही समझ में नहीं आएगा देर आर डिफरेंट नोटेशन देर आर डिफरेंट आस्क 
द क्वेश्चन इज स्ट्रक्चर्ड इन अ वेरी डिफरेंट वे ऑल टूगेदर जो आपका मैथमेटिक्स और स्टेटिस्टिक्स वहां पे लगता है एट सी एम सी एस लेवल पेपर इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड और कॉम्प्रीहेंड वट इज रिक्वायर्ड ओवर देर विदाउट सम बैकग्राउंड इन्फॉर्मेशन बट इफ यू लुक एट सीपी वन क्वेश्चन फॉर दट मैटर यू कैन इजिली स्कीम थ्रू अफ यू क्वेश्चन पेपर यू वॉन्ट एंड अप बिंग इन अ पोजिशन जहां पे आपको क्वेश्चन क्या है वो समझ में नहीं आएगा इट्स जस्ट दैट ग्रेजुअली ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम यू वुड नीड सफिशियंट बुक का नॉलेज and sufficient understanding of comprehension which is required in those papers so that you are able to do justice to the paper now having said that let me just quickly show you uh, the entire content and one of the biggest reasons why cp1 is severely dreaded it's because of the fact that it's very vast so if i just show you the uh, content for that matter just give me one second the core structure basically looks something like this you basically have 38 plus 1 there's a chapter number 0 as well and usse bhi questions aate hain so there are total of 39 chapters that you're supposed to be covering up over here uh i'm not including glossary over here there are 38 chapters and then there's a chapter 0 which is basically uh introduction so there are a total of 39 chapters which in itself is very huge humongous on top of that certain things over here are theoretical certain things over here are rhetoric and certain things over here are uh, let's just say comprehension inclusive so aapko bahut zyada comprehend karna padega in order to be able to uh, get going with this particular subject right now if i get cracking about the syllabus aap if i divided the first one is very basic it 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 just includes very you know uh, basic form of things it's agar aap aaj isko pick up karo maybe by tomorrow you'll be able to cover up without significant uh, difficulties part 2 is where you know actual study begins so if you look at it they have divided it beautifully into three categories one is benefits life and gi which are basically the three most uh, uh, forms of specialization that a lot of people do so then you get some basic information about life some basic information about gi some basic information about pension all these three form your foundation so that you can crack any sort of question that may be asked about cp1 because the entire premise if i recall CP1 is right there in between, so that you can get foundational information about investments, finance, uh, GI, life, pensions, everything, and everything is tested within this. Next, if you look at part three and part four, I can basically club them together and call them investments. So they have established a few products to begin with: bond, equity, real estate, all the uh, different kinds of investment, and then they are talking mostly about investment as we are kind of moving ahead. so 3 and 4 is basically let's just say club them together we call them investments 5 is data uh which is kind of specialized it will be difficult for me to you know uh, uh for someone who's working will probably understand what data is what modeling is uh for someone who's a uh, student might i mean i can call that jo aap logo ne pehle deterministic model stochastic model ye sab padha tha us theoretical points ka application is what you will do in this particular part next part is mo mo mortality morbidity morbidity expenses contract designs uh, pricing how do you do all of that this is again a basic foundational area if i may say this forms foundation for your part 7 and 8 which are risk so 7 and 8 agar aap dekho this is basically risk governance risk identification uh, accepting risk risk measurement risk transfer so there are two segments again which focus entirely on risk and agar aap last two mein jao this is basically valuations Uh, how do you value liabilities provisions and that forms your foundation for capital which is basically the last uh, subject uh, the last uh, segment altogether so this 10 segments the way they have been bifurcated it is to give you sufficient information about each and every item that you're supposed to know about as you're kind of moving up the order having said that agar aap isko aur uh, subdivide karke if you if you if you just take a step back now how is it different from other subjects for that matter cm cs it is different because there it was statistics altogether or mathematics altogether agar aapne sufficient questions solve kiye hain with pen and paper or or you know on excel whatsoever you will be able to get through that paper it's a lot different over here because now you are kind of pivoting from that route to be able to comprehend and write so yahan pe aapka comprehension is very important writing is what will be more important and of course it's not you write jargons over there you have to comprehend and write so that's like the first uh, line of difference uh, so from solving questions to understanding comprehending and giving solutions is the first pivot that you make from initial papers to this paper 
नेक्स्ट अगर मैं बोलूँ हाउ इज इट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम एस पी एस ए लेवल पेपर सो इफ यू आर चूजिंग एनी पर्टिकुलर एस पी लेवल पेपर एस पी फाइव एस पी सिक्स या फिर सेवन एट थ्री यू विल बी स्पेशलाइजिंग इन वन पर्टिकुलर डोमेन इट कैन बी इन्वेस्टमेंट इट कैन बी इट कैन बी जी आई इट कैन बी लाइफ इट कैन बी हेल्थ वॉट एवर इट इज एक स्पेशलाइज नॉलेज होगा विच विल टेस्ट यू ऑन वन डोमेन ओनली you will go super deep in that domain the depth will be it's like 1 inch wide and 1 mile deep so you are covering only 1 inch but you are going super deep within that it's different from that because you are covering a lot but you are not going super deep within this aapko bahut zyada depth ka requirement nahi hota hai within this as compared to your other papers uh, uh, which are your sp and sa level papers now one of the key differentiators within uh, cp1 the reason why it is most dreaded is number one of course like we saw there are 39 chapters so it's like covering a lot of things and even after covering these chapters you will still find certain difficulties which we'll look at when we are discussing papers but pehla difficulty first elephant in the box is that it's very huge it's humongous probably the largest in terms of the number of chapters or depth or the number of pages uh, whatever way you want to call it so that is one of the biggest reasons why people in in itself you know initially they get shied away ki itna depth hai do i have sufficient time or not when should i appear for it and hence a lot of questions which you guys had also posted ki sir i am a college student should i go for it right now because it may impact my salary uh, because wo increment iska jo hai wo nahi milega it's usually the one of the highest increment papers uh, uh, as well and for working professional it's like how do i manage it with uh, a full time work so it's like uh, a you know tussle between the two जहाँ पे स्टूडेंट्स ये समझ नहीं पा रहे कि मैं करूं या नहीं करूं और वर्किंग प्रोफेशनल्स आर फाइंडिंग इट वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू मैनेज हैविंग सेड दैट लास्ट टर्म अ लॉर्ड ऑफ फोक्स दैट आई टॉट अ सिग्निफिकेंट चंक ऑफ देम वर एक्चुअली आई मीन सिग्निफिकेंट चंक मैं बोलूँ देर वर एटलीस्ट फोर और फाइव गाइज जिनके लिए दिस वॉज द लास्ट पेपर दे हैड डन एवरी थिंग दे वर डन विद एवरी थिंग दिस वॉज द लास्ट पेपर विच वॉज लेफ्ट सो जस्ट वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट आई वुड ब्रिंग टू यूर नोटिस और दैट आई वुड वॉन्ट यू टू अंडरस्टैंड इज whenever you have time whenever you feel you are in that position and if you can comprehend it well go for this paper agar aap cm agar aap uh, let's say ct series se you are well ahead barring let's say cs2 or maybe cm2 jo maan lo nikal nahi raha hai rather than completely wasting your time effort and energy towards just that paper you can pick this up can it's a very big can assuming that you know you have sufficient time to devote towards this paper and for those who are working of course you will have to work very hard towards it agar if you are starting let's just say for the september paper if, if for the september term if i were to talk about you will definitely have to make sure you start no later than today the best time is today of course but let's just say the latest can be first week of may then of course you will have may june july and august four full months which is exactly the amount of time that i would say is sufficient for you to be able to crack this particular paper because of the sheer size that you have to uh, uh, cover within this another most important uh differentiators and this is probably going to be more important for all you guys as a student agar main theoretically baat kar raha hu theoretically agar aap baat karo uh, i'm not talking about what they are doing with the papers right now but cm1 cs1 at least even theoretically agar main baat kar raha hu to cm2 also you can potentially score north of 95 agar aapka everything that you have written down there is correct there is no reason to believe that you cannot स्कोर मोर देन यू नो नाइनटीज और एट्टीज के ऊपर तो बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स का आता है गेटिंग ओवर सेवेंटीज इज ऑफकोर्स नॉट आई मीन एवरी स्टूडेंट वुड प्रोबेबली एम फॉर गेटिंग अब सेवेंटीज इन देर सी यू नो एवरी सिटी लेवल पेपर फॉर दैट मैटर द बिगेस्ट डिफरेंशिएटर फ्रॉम दैट लेवल योर सिटी लेवल पेपर टू एस पी एस ए टू सम एक्सटेंट एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली विद सी पी वन इज स्कोरेबिलिटी द स्कोरेबिलिटी इन सी पी वन स्पेसिफिकली गोज फॉर अ टॉस एंड 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 अ बिग टॉस फॉर दैट मैटर द रीजन वाई आई से दैट इज नंबर वन एक बड़ा प्रॉब्लम दैट यू साइट इज ऑफकोर्स द वास्टनेस ऑफ सिलेबस सेकेंड थिंग इज इट्स थियोरिटिकल इन दैट सेंस की लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल फाइंड की अच्छा थियोरी है बुक वर्क मुझे लिखना है बट दैट इज नॉट एक्जैक्टली द आस्क ऑफ ऑफ द यू नो इंस्टीट्यूट दे आर कॉम्प्रीहेंडिंग देर वॉन्ट दे वॉन्ट यू टू कॉम्प्रीहेंड क्वेश्चन इन अ डिफरेंट वे एंड दे स्पेसिफिकली आस्क एंसर इन अ डिफरेंट वे सो इवन इन द बेस्ट के सीनारियो जो मैंने आज तक देखा है बेस्ड ऑन माई a uh, limited understanding the best score in cp1 that i have seen so far is 71 the best score the highest and this term me 71 ka score aaya tha jo maine highest dekha hai abhi tak in that term the pass marks were 62 so the idea here is that for cp1 the 
बिगेस्ट द बिगर रीजन दैट यू विल लेटर ऑन फाइंड आउट जो आपको आज कोई नहीं बताएगा आज आप किसी से भी पूछोगे दिल टेल यू सीपी वन इज डिफिकल्ट वाई बिकॉज इट्स वास्ट यू हैव टू कवर अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन दैट इज दैट इट्स वास्ट ऑफकोर्स दैट्स वन बट बिगर चैलेंज दैट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल फेस आफ्टर दे स्टार्टेड डूइंग दिस इज दैट स्कोरेबिलिटी गोज फॉर अ टॉस एंड द मार्जिन फॉर एरर जो आपका होता है इज वेरी लिमिटेड ओवर हेयर अगर आप सोचो सेवेंटी इज लाइक द बेस्ट केस सीनारियो लेट जस्ट पुट इट दैट वे 99% of the cases you won't be scoring anything above 70 and say suppose 60 is the pass mark 62 was that way in an exception up historically jaoge it has been 58 59 57 60 it has gone up to 62 so at least you should aim for 60 that's like the bare minimum at least you should aim for 65 but bare minimum wherein you can be relatively more uh, let's just say free or free free minded ho sakte ho is basically upward of 60 so 70 best case hai 60 is like the pass mark so your room for error is only 10 marks now beyond that agar aap dekho there are two papers within this that is asked there is paper 1 paper b both are 100 marks both come together unlike your earlier papers both come together in 50 50% weightage so aapko equally dono mein uh, uh, you know you have to give equal effort towards both of them and you have to equally perform your give your best in both the papers it can't be that today on paper 1 let's just say it's an easier paper पेपर वन आपका बहुत अच्छा गया आप मान लो उसमें 65 भी ले आते हो बट ऑन द नेक्स्ट डे यू स्टिल हैव टू स्कोर एटलीस्ट अब 55 सो दैट यू कैन बेयर मिनिमम यू नो गेट दैट पास मार्क एंड 55 इन इटसेल्फ इज अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट स्कोर टू गेट इन सीपी वन स्पेसिफिकली सीपी वन पेपर बी अगर मैं बात करूं सो वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट चैलेंजेस और फियर्स विद इन सीपी वन ओवर हियर इज स्कोरेबिलिटी बिकॉज लाइक आई सेड देर इज वेरी लिटल और वेरी यू नो बहुत ही नैरो मार्जिन फॉर एरर रहता है आपके लिए अगर आप क्वेश्चन छोड़ देते हो या फिर अगर आप कोई क्वेश्चन अटेम्प्ट नहीं कर पाते हो यूर जस्ट राइटिंग मे बी वन लाइन टू लाइन समथिंग लाइक दैट दैट इज नॉट लेजेस एक्सेप्टेड विद इन सी पी वन यू हैव टू मेक श्योर डेट यूर अटेम्प्टिंग एवरीथिंग एंड दैट ब्रिंग्स मी टू द सेकेंड थिंग विच इज काइंड ऑफ इंटरलिंग टू दिस यू कूड एव डिसाइफर्ड बाई नाउ बाकी सब मान लो लेजे से यू यूर सेटिंग फॉर सी एम वन और सी एम टू वट एवर इट इज मान लो सी एम टू आप कर रहे हो आपको से सपोज ब्राउनियन नहीं समझ आ रहा है यू यू लेफ्ट ब्राउनियन लेट्स जैसे यू लेफ्ट आई डोंट नो लेट्स जैसे यू लेफ्ट सम अदर चैप्टर्स एज वेल मान लो कि आपने ब्राउनियन छोड़ दिया मान लो आपने ब्लैक शोल्स छोड़ दिया यू फाइंड या तो उसमें से ज्यादा वेटेज का आता नहीं है मैक्सिमम इट कैन कम फॉर इज लेट्स जैसे 15 20 एंड यू कैन स्टिल अपीयर फॉर 80 एंड गेट अ 70 आउट ऑफ दैट सो देयर वाज अ रूम अर्लियर दैट यू प्रोबब्ली आर नॉट वेरी वेल प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर and you get lucky ki usme se kuch aaya nahi there was also this room that you could have left few chapters intentionally ki theek hai ye wala chapter mujhe samajh mein nahi aa raha hai main isko chhod deta hu dekha jayega i'll i'll cover up the entire 90% you know with 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 absolute ye uh, giving your best and uh, you will basically try to you know do the best justice that you can with that particular uh, uh, learning that you have done that thing basically is not available for you as a luxury within cp1 because 100 marks paper a plus 100 marks paper b will definitely ensure that more or less everything from your syllabus will get covered and within each and every question for that matter which they give they will try to ensure that you know they ask different variety of questions so for instance uh, last wale term ka jo maine paper diya that's slightly different but agar main aapko ek question paper dun ek ek simple question paper will give you a particular background uh, and with that background they will ask you multiple questions which covers everything so let me just create a background which is possible they'll give you let's say there's a defined benefit scheme uh koi ek scheme hai and us scheme ka assets itna hai say assets is 1000 liabilities are say 900 100 ka uh, surplus hai now they will ask you acha what are the risks associated so they'll cover risk next they will ask acha what are the possible investment avenues for them so investment gets covered next they will ask you uh you know what are the uh, how can you value liability so that gets covered they can also ask you how to gather data how to model how would you set assumptions and all of that so basically with one background unlike in other chapters jahan pe aap black holes karo to black holes hi aayega agar ek black holes ka question hai it's most likely not going to cover binomial uh, right but in this particular situation you will find that one background is sufficient to test you on each and every parameter uh, of this entire syllabus so the crux again remains that it's huge number one of course and number two you have to still ensure that you're covering everything within the syllabus because one way or the other agar aap pura question paper utha ke dekho aapko pata chalega ki they are going to test you on each and every parameter nothing uh, 
is, is going to be left out. So this is basically about the syllabus. Now, if I uh, uh, go next, uh, the next thing that I want to cover is basically what is uh, what do you expect out of question papers? So question paper part A, part B may divided here. Part A is, let's just say, wherein you need more of uh, uh, book work in a way. It will basically have anywhere between seven to 10 questions. Each and every question will have anywhere between six to 10, 15 marks uh, allocated towards it. Within that, they're going to test you on different parameters. Question number one might test you on modeling. Question number two might test you on expenses and all of that. So pe bifurcations rehte hai, you get a lot of questions and they basically test you relatively more theoretically in part one so that you know they can see that you've understood every concept well before uh, uh, you know you can proceed ahead uh, uh, in your journey. So that's the testing parameter for paper one. If I talk about paper two, Paper two slightly different hota hai. Jo aap logo ko maine PDF diya hai, uska jo first question hai, uh, sorry second question hai, which is like a case study, that is paper two. So paper two would usually have two case studies. Uh, the uh, most ideal uh, allocation is 50 marks each. So there will be one case study which will have 50 marks. There will be another case study which will have another 50 marks. And within that, they're going to test you on a lot of uh, uh, parameters. So their comprehension becomes slightly more important because you have to remain confined within the boundaries that are set that uh, set by that particular case study and within that case study you have to answer all of the questions uh, that they kind of ask you agar my number of questions wise if i if i were to talk about it each case study would have anywhere between 7 to 10 questions so you can expect anywhere up to 16 17 questions the mark allocation of course is again very uh, volatile lowest can even go up to one the last time i think it was one or two marks as well the highest allocation that i have seen is it even goes to 15 to 17 for a single question right so mark key variation bahut zyada hoti hai, but testing parameter slightly changes between paper one and paper two paper one is relatively more theoretical in that sense and paper one may uh, if i may say they give you a lot of traps and we'll try to identify those traps as we're kind of moving ahead but that just gives you a perspective of so I've checked off syllabus. I've checked off, uh, you know, the kind of question paper that that basically comes from within this. Next, I just want to quickly show you a couple of question papers, uh, a couple of questions for that matter. Don't really think a lot of background information, a lot of understanding of CP1 is needed for that. It's very open ended looking question for that matter. So let me just quickly show you those questions which uh, which you would have received. And I want to get your understanding as well. Ki how would you go ahead uh, with those questions? If they were to come in the question, uh, if they were to come in the examination. So as you're kind of moving ahead, uh, one of the key reasons why this particular question has been chosen is, and, and I'll show you that there are multiple traps which are incorporated with, you know, every, every question paper will inevitably have a lot of traps, which basically requires comprehension and that comprehension comes with practice. So part one, I'll just quickly give a read. The government of a country with large oil reserves is setting up a fund to invest the proceeds of its oil sales for the long term future benefit of the country. The government is looking for an advice on a number of issues relating to the risk and reward profiles of various investment opportunities. So that should give you a hint that it is based on investment. Now, of course, you don't have, you know, pre understanding of investments for that matter, which is fine. I don't expect that. But still, you will find certain uh, misunderstanding in terms of con uh, conception. So next thing that they're saying is, there is a political pressure on the government to ensure that a significant proportion of the fund is invested in country's domestic markets itself. Now they're asking you discuss the merits of domestic investment compared to overseas investment with respect to achieving this long term goal of the fund. Can someone very simply, uh, uh, you know, give me what this basically means? Discuss the merits of government. Can someone simplify? and tell this to me, although I know it's very simple, but I just want to show you guys the mirror that what you understand about this question may not necessarily be true about what this question asks out of you. So just a directional, uh, uh, I just need a direction from you. Ki question number two, mein aap kya address karoge? what is it that you will address? Advantages of domestic investment, correct? What is the domestic, uh, what is the advantage of investing in domestic uh, uh, market as compared to something else? Now you'll be shocked to see what, what is it that they have and uh, it will come of course with practice. But let me just show you what the ask of this particular question 
yes it was september 2023 ka question paper let me just show you the answer script that will uh, tell you ki where was it that people ended up making a lot of mistakes So yeah, this was the question. Uh, this was basically September question eight, and this was part one, which is fine. Part two, if you just look at it, what is it that they've given within the answer and just look at the allocations. First, they have given advantages of overseas. Agar aap question paper ek bar wapas dekhte ho, the question basically had asked you, discuss the merits of domestic investments compared to overseas investment. The answer, if you look at it, is totally different as compared to what you might otherwise think. They have given advantages of overseas, and then they have given multiple advantages why you should invest overseas, and that of course will come with practice, key diversification, increment, मतलब वो benefits. These are very generic in that sense, but they have given advantage of overseas, and then they have given advantage of domestic. And now, if you look at the answer, yes. Yeah, so if you look at this, they have said part two was not answered well, as well with few candidates considering command verb. and then looking at the situation from different angles now they have not basically spurred it out exactly but exact mistake i won't really call it a mistake it, it looks very enticing that they are potentially asking you only the advantages of domestic so it's very difficult to think that you are also supposed to give advantages of overseas but that was one thing which got missed out by a lot of folks as a result of which unnecessarily a lot of marks were lost that was one and i can show you multiple examples with a lot of other past papers where in every term would invariably have a lot of these traps so these traps will come from two things you'll you'll be able to address them better with two things thing number 1 would be wherein you are solving a lot of papers and thing number 2 is comprehending better so that better comprehension requires you to directionally move in such a way that you're solving a lot of these questions so that you can you know equip yourself in a better way ab is question mein kya hoga let's let's just take an example say suppose aapne pura syllabus kar liya you have learned everything you have done everything you see that particular question you know what the advantages of domestic investment are because you have learned it you write all the advantages of domestic investment but the problem is aap 6 mein se sirf teen ka attempt kar rahe ho because 50% of that was towards giving advantage of overseas and other 50% of that was towards giving advantage of domestic so in a lot of cases what happens is comprehension in itself is not there as a result of which people are either not attempting full uh, question or are not giving sufficient points Uh, as a result of or or let's just say which is prima facie a requirement uh, in this question and questions like these i can open multiple such question papers i can open potentially every question paper uh, historically would have one or two or maybe more of these uh, particular tabs is it because the question says discuss yes that was the thing discuss is what gives that away because agar aap dekho if if generally if i ask you discuss the advantages of this it's basically not just that you're supposed to give the advantages it's a it becomes rhetorical as a result of which you're supposed to give both advantages of this and look at the counter thesis which is disadvantage or in a way you can say advantage of the other one so the word discuss in itself changes the entire premise of that question discuss ki jagah agar isi question mein inhone list diya hota uh, sorry list so if they had given list the merits of domestic investment this question would have become totally different similar to that there are multiple other questions i don't want to take a lot of examples maybe i'll, I'll show you guys one more uh, wherein the question entirely changes ki how do you increase the premium versus how do you increase the net premium so premium versus net premium changes the entire premise of question and this is what ha what has historically happened with a lot of questions now let's just say maine i just opened uh, september 23 for that matter let's just randomly open september 22 i'll show you guys that there definitely has to be some trap here and there specifically within both part mein hota hai part 1 mein thoda zyada evident hota hai so an investment systematic diversified way okay i think i think yes this question in itself might have some traps so let's just let's just look at this 
it says an insurance company ha huh, this is this is one good question this is one good question i remember so this question says an an insurance company has reviewed its pricing assumption wo aapko assumption padhna padega but for someone who is let's just say for the 50% working professionals at least it will not be that uh, challenging even for those who are not it's not very difficult you will be able to understand the ask aap plain padhoge to bhi aapko samajh mein aayega ki question puchna kya chahta hai so it says an insurance company has just reviewed its pricing assumptions following the review the company has revised its annual renewal expenses pricing assumption on one of its products to 60 pounds per policy the average annual renewal expenses for this product over the recent years have been 85 pounds per policy so what is it that they are saying let's just say you are hdfc life aap maan lo term insurance bech rahe ho aap kuch revision kar rahe ho within your term insurance aapne historically dekha that your price or let's just say the renewal expenses that you incurred was 85 pounds for each policy now when you are pricing it uh, uh, for for this particular term aap 60 pounds per policy leke aage ja rahe ho so historically the expense was 85 but now when you are pricing it what you will recover from the client you are actually taking only 60 pounds per policy they are asking you discuss the possible reasons why annual renewal expense assumption has been set to less than the average over the uh, uh, last few years so can someone just you know it's, it seems like a very plain question for working professionals i don't think it will be that challenging a question what are the things that you can think of maybe just two three points which will obviously be right i'm telling you it's not that difficult a paper it's not your cm1 jahan pe aapko a bar n 1 is to n ka matlab nahi pata to aap nahi kar sakte you can still understand comprehend and despite four months of rigorous study you will get it either wrong or you will only attempt 50% or 50 uh, 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 let's just say three or three point five or four marks. Ka. So can just can someone just directionally tell me what will be, what could be the reasons why expenses were eighty five per policy and you are taking sixty? Just a few points. <clears throat> so i hope this is not very agar koi comprehension mein issue i can still try and uh, tackle that but i expect that some bit of answers can potentially come because earlier our pricing was high than competitors that can be so competition can be one issue maybe they have increased expand exp on other products so it can add reduce the premium amount because of competition so you want to reduce the premium as a result of competition so competition let's just put it one bracket competition is one thing that a lot of people have checked out uh, so far because competitors are charging something so for that reason you might want to charge slightly lower as well which is a very valid point you will get marks for that but what else changes in business strategy correct uh, i'll give you that that is also a possibility ki aapne for some reason you are changing your business strategy within that you can write uh, and and once you study you will find there are points that you can write that you want to be a loss leader aap loss leader ban ke you want to gain market share that is a very good valid point which you can put within this but directionally it is right they have split expenses into renewal and other fees that's directionally very correct aap bahut zyada matlab you are you are close in that sense that you have uh, uh, split the expenses but let's just look at what the ask was now within this there are a few traps which are uh, uh, involved maybe taking forward looking approach in the pricing assumptions now that is th that is the kind of answer that you know that you are looking for if they are looking at forward looking that is one very good point past experience has changed that is second very good point so i'll tell you what even for someone who is just a student ekdam ekdam beginner ko bhi agar main do jisko english samajh mein aata hai aur usko pata hai ki product ka expense kya hota hai he will also be able to write competition maybe a very valid point that comes after you have studied is regulation bahut sare log regulation likhte hain because regulation ek chapter hai us chapter mein once you have gone through you will find a lot of people will understand regulation and they will say that okay regulator wants you to you know put a cap on expense because they put a lot of caps commission pe caps rakhte hain bahut sare cheezon pe so they the second point that comes is regulation few people may write around data or something and two things which usually get missed out is number one that it is talking about historical so historically your expense was 85 does not necessarily have to mean that futuristically also your expense have to be 60 uh, sorry 85 aapka uh, last year you spent 85 does not mean this year also you will spend 6, uh, 85 right it can go down it can go up so one thing which surprisingly a lot of people miss out on is that the assumptions have changed and within that you will learn gradually that there are a 
लॉर्ड ऑफ पॉइंट दैट कैन कम वन सिर्फ गॉन थ्रू द चैप्टर की वो एक चीज हो सकता है and one bigger trap which was kind of left and ye kisi chapter mein nahi hai this this part which i am just going to reveal to you is not a part of any particular chapter it's basically just plain comprehension and that level of comprehension will only come in one way when you are solving a lot of questions so can someone try to acha main highlight karta hu and then tell me can you give me a differentiation basis this only based on what i have highlighted or let's just say Uh, now it should become relatively more clear so i have underlined and highlighted a couple of things just basis those words can you tell me how your assumptions can potentially change and what can be the reason behind that as well exchange rate is fine sales is higher now yes now you have caught the particular uh, thing which was required which is basically sales is higher than expect, expected as a result of which your per policy expense gets split across a wider variety as a result of which your per policy uh, man lo your let's just say your expenses same right your expense was 10000 last year your expense is 10000 this year last year you sold only 1000 policies so per policy expense was 10 this year you are selling 10000 policy so your per policy expense is 1 so ultimately if i boil it down a good answer to this question and any other question for that matter is me you have to be directionally very correct you have to pick up one point within cp1 ek particular point ko aapko pakadna hai and within that point once you have grabbed it up you have to give a proper comprehension so that you convince the examiner that you have comprehended the question well enough from all the angles now if i just take a step back how would i address this question or how the examiners expect you to be able to address questions like these so that you can score full marks or let's just say high marks is that first you pick up your basic things jo aapne bola regulation ke bare mein you pick up regulation and then maybe give that regulation might have changed as a result of this and maybe give an example example uh, capping per policy has been uh, brought down as a result of this that as well so you pick up regulation give a description and then you move ahead next thing you can say is that your actual expenses might have gone down last year your expense was high this year your expenses actually gone down so someone had said that assumptions might have changed vision might have changed so you talk about that next so apne regulation pakda next apne expense ko pakda ki ho sakta hai expense hi change ho raha next you do when you're done with that pick up something else this something else will be per policy for that matter in this case so you can pick up per policy and say that your number of sales that you envisage for this year might be much higher as compared to what you are envisaging the last year as a result of which the allocation gets widened to a lot of different policies hence your per policy expense is now going down so this is another thing that you have picked up next what you have to pick up is basically uh, uh, let's say your data has basically changed apne historically there might be some error that you were doing now you have rectified that particular error and then you can also talk about trends that over a period of time there might be a trend as a result of which it has gone down or you have gotten through better administration you have maybe uh, let's just say uh, a very good point you might have given some part of your admin cost to someone else you might have started outsourcing for that matter now why i am telling all of these points is because a bad answer can be crafted despite incorporating all of these bad answer kaise wahan pe a lot of people the mistake that they do is they typically talk about a few points within these that okay i have picked up this thing and they have spoken but everything becomes very rap half as a rampant ki aapne pehle per policy pe bola and then you are talking about uh let's just say regulation and then you're talking about your assumption data everything gets matched up and it's very difficult to comprehend what is it exactly that you're trying to showcase so within this two things become very important number one is proper comprehension ki aap question ko all angles se analyze karo which is a gradual process of let's just say the next 3 4 months second thing is presentation within presentation also you have to be very precise it's not that you have understood it from all angles doesn't mean कि आप पहला पॉइंट यू से रेगुलेशन एंड देन यू टॉक अबाउट अजम्पन एंड देन यू टॉक अबाउट समथिंग एंड समथिंग इट शुड नॉट बी दैट वे सो आइडियली यू हैव टू वर्क डायरेक्शनली यू हैव योर एफर्ट्स हैव टू गो इन टू डायरेक्शन फर्स्ट इज दैट यू गेट सफिशियंट टेक्निकल नॉलेज विच वेन बाय टेक्निकल नॉलेज आई मीन यू शुड हैव कॉम्प्रीहेंशन ऑफ द एंटायर बुक वर्क आपको पूरा बुक अच्छे से समझना होगा एक्सपेंस 
chapter you have to understand it thoroughly every chapter for that matter you have to understand thoroughly so that you can basically tackle this next thing is that you have to solve a lot of questions as you're kind of gradually going ahead so that you can get yourself out of these traps in a particular question paper what will happen is most of the students will definitely not pick up that per policy and only five to ten percent of the people the top five to ten percent of the people will actually talk about your assumption your actual expense might have changed and those administration point and the other points which are coming 90 percent to niche 90 percent come about who look same repeated points thing regulation might have changed or uh, uh, uh you know uh, you want to be loss leader you want to uh, expand you want to sell it at a losses which are valid points i'm not saying they are invalid they're wrong they're by no means wrong they're absolutely correct points but you're just not covering enough to justify the seven marks on table for seven marks you need to cover different variety of points let's just say four to five varieties at least which we just discussed and go deeper in all of that most of the answers if you know someone who has attempted if you just look at the comprehension that they might have done they would have picked up these two and they would have written a page Ek page pura bhar diya hoga, kyunki fata -fata type karna hai. but that will not fetch you marks because you need to have unique points as well and that uniqueness of points will only come if you're practicing enough going forward and you have seen a lot of past papers and you're able to let's just say you know uh let's just say connecting the dots is both the moment you look at this question everything that you've studied on expenses should come your own comprehension should come and the past last chapters major questions have solved ke, everything should come so ultimately what i'm what it boils down to is the final crux which i will say before i open it up for question and answer sirf book up rat bhi loge to bhi aap pass nahi ho sakte sirf past question papers bhi aap rat loge to bhi aap pass nahi ho sakte it has to be a mix of both and for the sake of repetition i'm just reiterating this fact that the room for error is very low and i have shown you with all these questions that no matter which question you pick up a lot of people the biggest mistake in cp1 is that they don't attempt for seven marks they attempt for two marks thinking that they're attempting for seven marks they write a lot they fill up one or two pages write six thousand words in the examination but that doesn't mean that you will pass because other x other let's say regulation or this kill or ek marki allocated you can't get more than two no matter how much you write so you need to have that variety of uh, uh, relevant points uh just one in is order of relevant point necessary if we have sufficiently written unique points i won't say order is necessary but there needs to be a direction towards it i have seen a question i have actually seen one particular uh, uh, paper not this question wherein the candidate had covered more or less everything but directionally it was so rampant that it became very difficult for the examiner to be able to understand he that guy has understood or not as a result of that your all of your hard work goes into it it doesn't have to be that you have to first pick up regulation and then pick up something else and then pick up something else not that way you can start by mentioning that per policy and then take that okay sales might have increased as a result of which allocation has gone up but put a full stop and then move on a, a bad habit is wherein you pick up sales and then you talk about without completing that sales might have increased your sale that sales might be a reason and then you talk about let's just say outsourcing and then you come back and say that the number of policies sold might have increased that looks very off for that matter so your all the hard work goes into vain because of improper structuring so structuring is also very important within cp1 so these are like the best practices which i just wanted to inculcate ki as you're going ahead and as you're as you're studying let's just say you need to be very uh let's just say how do i put it directional effort is uh, uh, you know absolutely required within this aapko right direction mein jaake isko padhna hai agar aap sara book cover karke exam mein baithte ho and god forbid but things don't pan out the way that you had anticipated it's not because you didn't put in the hard work but here you need to have a directional hard work you have to be very directional you have to be very thorough with all of these and like i've said every matlab aap inevitably aap koi bhi question paper mujhe nikal ke de to maybe i'm not talking about 2005 where it was not open book so a lot of book work might be asked but last few terms you pick up any questions every paper would have these traps so if i divide the question paper right my question paper ko divide karta hu there will be 40 marks which will be very easy work ekdam super plain easy agar aapne padha hai book even if you have not studied book let's just say aap open book hai even if you open on that day wo 40 mein se maybe 25 aap le aoge and if you have studied it thoroughly you can even get up to 30 or 35 for that matter uh, in in that particular segment the next segment is where comprehension becomes a challenge the questions like these here this is the next 40% of the question here you are not able to comprehend the key ask of the question 
you are not writing sufficient unique points for that matter which is required in this particular question and hence aap maan lo 40 mein se maybe you are attempting only for 15 or 20 and that is the best case scenario i'm saying i'm not even talking about you going absolutely off and maybe writing something which will fetch you a zero usko main hata bhi do to bhi you are only attempting for 15 to 20 and the last 10 15 20 marks it can be very challenging sometimes wherein people end up going directionally absolutely wrong in those questions ki aapka ask a hai and you're writing completely about b and as a result of that you lose out on marks and that is usually you know one way or the other few questions will be like that a uh, ideal strategy for cp1 is where the first 40 anything below 32 is not justified you have to get that 32 over there if it's a straight forward question you need to do justice to that and your maximum effort needs to go towards the next 40 where in comprehension plays a key role and for that you have to be directionally absolutely bang on you have to make sure your chapter work your past question work everything is done so thoroughly that the moment you look at question like this and this question will never repeat ye question wapas repeat nahi hone wala maybe at least next few terms to repeat nahi hone wala maybe sometime in the future they might ask something similar to this but exact same question will never come so unlike your earlier paper where in you know a simple same kind of question paper question But you know, uh, instead of option ka premium being 19.2, they will ask 20.2 and volatility ko 20 se 30 percent kar dete hai. It's very different over here. They won't change the expense ki acha 65, 85 ko 50, 40 karke they won't give the same question. But comprehension that you carry from this question needs to, I mean, at the back of your mind you need to have mind maps, and then you need to be able to ensure that you know you are covering everything holistically, which you can apply when the question comes, which are on similar ground but not the same. so that is your you know directional effort that that needs to go towards it and now that we have covered so many things they, but if you look at this particular question as well ultimately what i wanted it, what what it boils down to is because you have covered significant paper one paper two mein is type ka question aayega i don't think that anyone would find challenge understanding what it is asking you yeah iska comprehension is not going to be very uh, difficult for that matter the real difficulty that arose in this particular paper was with these three questions Uh, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of government introducing. If you study, if you try, you will potentially be able to write a lot within this as well. But again, one thing that gets missed out on this particular question is that people practically, man, look, project A, B, C, D about solar, about large farm tidal. They can write. You can basically write a lot of general points, right? That solar may be possible. Maybe during bad weather, you don't uh, harness sufficient solar power. uh it might be in a region where uh, you know sun sunlight is not sufficient raat ko aapko electricity nahi mil sakti so those are very basic general points which i may say which you can cover for solar same thing you can done to do for uh, wind as well ki it might be in a it a place wherein you know it's not harnessing enough you can write about capital expenditure ki bahut zyada capital expenditure ho sakta lage uh, uh, at the beginning so all those general things is usually what gets covered in most of the uh, uh, cases but still again over here for nine you are only attempting for five or six because book work ko aap yahan pe incorporate nahi kar pa rahe ho what portion of book work needs to be incorporated is something that you have to comprehend as you are kind of moving ahead kyunki ye aapko lagega ki book ka part hi nahi hai once you have studied well enough you will find that this is not even a part of your syllabus or not even a part of your book while it is a part of your book you will have to be able to connect that dot as you are kind of moving ahead any question which has seven marks or more in one way or the other you will have to ensure or maybe six to seven marks or above you will have to make sure that sufficient book work is incorporated as a part of those answers so once you go through the examiner's report also it will be difficult for you to get because a lot of general points will be there but there will be certain critical points in this case it might be on data and assumptions so aapko data and assumption jo aapne book work padha hai somehow you will have to bring that and put into answers over here as well and that's how you actually attempt for nine marks otherwise you are only attempting for five or six and out of five or six the max you can get is let's say agar six hai to you can maximum you can get is five so ultimately you end up going to a position where you are getting five out of nine which is not a good situation to be in it's like border line right so that usually is like the uh, problem you know in in the last one are the exact uh, what cp1 is about what are the traps and what the problems usually a lot of Uh, people face is what i wanted to give you so that when you're studying you can be very directional with your thought process ki this is the problem that i am aiming for and this is the short this is the you know a uh, uh, thing that they're expecting out of me and this is what i need to do having said that just two i think last more questions because i think i'm just looking at the questions is it very difficult is time to short acha within that if i may come back i won't really say that uh, time is short with this 
you still have sufficient time if you start right now three months is i would four months is a sweet spot for you to be in but within that agar aap soch rahe ho ki you will give cp1 plus some other advanced paper i'm not talking about cb1 or for that matter agar aap koi aur advanced paper de rahe ho i would not recommend going for these two papers if both of them are your first attempts agar aapne say suppose you have given sp5 in the past two marks se nahi hua then you can add it on uh, you can add cp1 and sp5 because bahut sare cheez within cp and sp level paper you will find there's a very big overlap because cp in, is basically there to help you with your sp and sa level papers it basically is the stepping stone which will uh, let's say in a way uh, you know get you up to pace with what is required with the questions uh and how you should thought how your thought process should develop as you're kind of moving ahead so wo sare cheeze aapko bahut uh uh acche se ye prepare karta hai so within that going back to it is if there is one paper man lo aapka cs2 do term nahi hua then you can potentially add it on potentially depending on how much ye burden you can take but for someone who is thinking that i'll give cp1 and sp5 you i mean i won't say not recommended i've seen people do that i've seen people uh, uh crack this as well but you need to work very hard if that is the scenario but if if there's something that i've already done you can obviously use this as an add on so now i'll open it up as a uh, as a you know q and a uh, for this uh, you guys can you know unmute yourself and you know maybe you know just raise the hand ask questions or you can post it on the chat box one by one i'll try and make sure that i can uh, you know uh, uh, get going and address as many questions as i can uh, there are a few questions i think i might have missed out so i'll just pick up those as well uh, say question is for 10 marks how many unique points should we target very difficult to give a uh, you know exact bifurcation to that if it's a seemingly general question jaise ye wala jo point tha it was very general right when the questions are general every point agar aap dekho examiner report mein it will usually carry 0.5 marks so in that case it's like into two wala policy probably applies if it was not that generic if it was like that expensive policy wala tha it was very much linked to your book work because expense in itself is a chapter and then once you are able to comprehend the per policy and everything in that case it's not exactly you know that for that every point that you get 0.5 over there so there will be one as well so there may be five points in depth is what is required in this particular question which i just uh, showed every bullet will potentially have 0.5 marks for that matter so for nine you'll potentially have to go for let's say 18 to 20 unique points which will not be that tricky because there are five different varieties right if you look at there was tide sun and all of that panch pe agar aap five into four bhi karte if you are able to generate four points for everything you are still at that uh, uh, you know place where you have let's say cover 20 different points so it's not that difficult so depending upon the ask of the question you will have to identify how many unique or how, what are the variety of questions uh, that you should be able to uh, you know target for that matter questions can be non insurance industry related yes agar if you consider investment as non insurance industry kyunki investment to definitely they ask two of the most let's say uh, uh, coveted fields that they usually ask is basically climate change climate change came in september 20 uh, climate change came in september 23 it was in paper 1 and paper b uh, which was total i think 64 marks combined paper a paper b and usse pehle april 24 mein again climate change was there and i think it was 150 mark for paper b and there was one question in paper a as well so climate change in itself is a, and this term they didn't ask climate change at all i think if if i'm not wrong or even if they did it might have been you know 5 10 marks so there are a few uh, uh, pointers like climate change and one more thing that which reminds me of this i'll take more questions cp1 mein they usually always try and test you on the hot topics whichever is the latest hot topic out there will definitely i won't say definitely is most likely to be tested so inflation when it becomes a hot topic you can anticipate something coming on inflation uh, this time if i'm not wrong there was one question which came on uh, gender pay gap and if you look at it uh, just 3 or 4 weeks back ifo had published a, a full stack on uh, gender pay gap uh, they had uh, published a material so gender pay back uh, pay gap because it was a hot topic in us and uh, sorry in uk and uh, uh, something which was rhetorical as a result of which question came from that as well so they try to test you on the recent hot topics but of course the questions will be curated in such a way that it will have some form of link into your uh, uh, actual chapter for that matter which is what you need to be able to crack questions can be non uh, ye ho gaya bhaiya i am finished with my final your exam and searching for jobs and i have left uh with cb1 in core series i'm getting confused 
should i appear for cp1 and club cp2 cp3 uh, paper or appear for uh, cp1 uh, kanishk uh, this of course you'll have to uh, i would say you'll, you'll have to I, I can't give a you know blanket answer to this i would if if i was in your place i would say that see cp2 cp3 are relatively easier paper cp3 i would say as an easy paper cp2 you will get to pace with that while you're working because a lot of excel is required over there which may be 100 into 2 uh, is the bifurcation but usually one of the questions usually paper 2 is much easier over there so scorability kind of doesn't go for a toss so cp2 as a paper uh, you can take up with your employment as well. Usually, I would suggest that you know CP2, CP3, if you keep it at least in your first year of employment, you can get it done. In the first term or first year, depending upon your year, you can get that done because you're not pausing your, uh, uh, let's just say, journey as well. You're consistently going on it. And at the same time, you're not compromising on your work as well because uh, when you're starting off with work, first six months to first one year, at least the first three months for that matter, will, will be usually a little grinding, you know, because that's an entirely new premise for you. So in that situation, if you have first term of your uh, work whenever you're doing it, for that, you can potentially keep one of these two papers uh, open. And if you feel that you can handle the pressure of both of them because you have sufficient time right now, in that case, you can take CP1. Uh, but yeah, if CP1, it will be a big, uh, let's just say, burden which will be taken off your shoulders. Because then later on, of course, you will identify. And, and one of the questions which I keep getting is, you won't get that increment and all. This is only directed towards folks who are aiming to, let's just say, qualify in the next few years. Once you get qualified, everything kind of, you know, it nullifies. Once you're qualified, it gets nullified. And once there is, let's just say, a correction, because your pay usually is a function of two things. It's a function of your papers and a function of your experience. Yes, even if you qualify, if you're starting going as a fresher, you won't get that number, which a four-year qualified actually is getting, right? But once you have, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you're getting in the system, you'll potentially get what a fresher is getting. But within four or four and a half years, with, with that, you know, three to four, five years of experience, you will find that, you know, your delta jo hai with a qualified will actually get nullified. It is my, uh, you know, uh, understanding based on interaction with just a few folks. Does CP1 require knowledge of past paper as CS, CM, CB? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, it helps. See, I just showed you a few question papers, right? It basically expects that you have understanding of those products. It basically expects that you understand what different life products are. And it basically also sets you, uh, like I said, it's a stepping stone so that you can be at pace with the question or the papers that are there to come in the future, right? For your next papers. So an uh, ideal situation for a student would be bare minimum apne CM1, CS1, and maybe CM2, at least these three papers, with maybe CB1, CB2, I don't count them as, you know, uh, 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 very important papers for that matter. Once you have done with these two, three papers, at least this is like the bare minimum, then you can start thinking, can I go for CP1? Without that, it's it's not uh, really a point. But of course, this can't be applied as a blanket because I know a few folks in CS1, CS2, CS2, CM2, CS2, CM2, 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 CS2, CM2, CS2, CM2, 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 CS2, CM2, CS2, CS2, CM2, CS2, 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 so it can't be a blanket. It's usually, let's just say, mostly applicable. And for that candidate, this come about Karao. He start. He he was from a non actual non actual background. He started off with his actual in his job because he somehow got an actual job. Gave CM one uh, and CS one, which was done in the earlier uh, regime as well. And CS two or CM two, he found difficulties because it's very difficult to manage with a full time job. So he cleared all the advanced paper. Everything is done, and I think right now he's potentially left with just one or two. Uh, CMCS paper. So that variety will also come, but I would rank them as outliers. Any numericals expected in CP1? I've never seen any numerical come ever in CP1. In SP and SA level papers, you can still find numericals. There are no numericals uh, uh, that, I have, that I have practically seen in CP1. It can give you numbers. I'm not saying they won't give you numbers, but they won't ask you to, it, it won't be that calculate this ratio or calculate the premium. It won't be there. They'll give you premium. And then they will ask you, okay, premium se batao, aap kya kar sakte ho? So they'll always test you on comprehension within CP1. It will always be writing based on what has been asked till uh, April 2024. Uh, this paper is purely theoretical. In a way, it's, I would say like based on this discussion, aapko ab samaj mein aajana it's not purely theoretical, it's pure comprehension. So a lot of comprehension is required within this. Uh, so that you're, you know, you're able to understand the core ask. And a lot of questions can be tackled 
इवन विदाउट लेते से कुछ एक क्वेश्चन जो हमने देखा यू डोंट रियली I I could show you those question papers freely without even you know you having uh, read through the entire material. So it's not that comprehension is any day more important than uh, theory in this particular segment. Agar see if it is an open book and they ask you theory, of course everyone will pass, right? So comprehension is what they'll test you on. That's that. See question is for ten mark. I will test that. Achha, so I think it was that question. So all right, guys. I think these are most of the questions. Okay, one second. Wait, wait, wait. Can you give me number of hours, weeks required to cover reading material and then past papers? Ah, uh, I would say at least. Ah, uh, you, you shouldn't. Okay, very. I, I don't want to say to each their own. To each their own is of course a blanket. Of is is of course a blanket statement. Ah, uh, but if I may say, you should ideally be spending. Ah. Uh, Let, let me just wait. I'll, I'll just quickly show you one thing. I think that might end up making comprehension slightly more easier. You will have to make sure that you know, and and you have to directionally go in the right way, which which you will have to find out by yourself. But if I may just show you one thing. yeah so if you have let's just say this covers a lot of chapters but if you have let's just say you know once you have gone through a chapter and if you have sufficient mind maps and everything it won't really take you a lot of time to be able to go, get going with the chapters chapters in itself are not very deep you need to understand those chapters but more important than understanding or you know uh, uh, a lot of people i've seen they spend days just you know reading the material that's not going to help your cause in any way whatsoever aap material pura rat ke bhi kya karoge material to aapke paas exam day mein bhi khula rahega so you have to understand the core ask of the materials you should have certain you know let's just say background information or certain help to your play so that you know you can ab jaise last day if you have this you can basically get done with chapters on on a very quick way then you just read the entire premise similar to that you, you should have something like this for all of the chapters which is created at at some end so that your comprehension of chapters doesn't really take a lot of time so chapters pe in an ideal scenario if i if i were to talk about it 48 chapters for each chapter i won't say on an average you will require more than 2 and a half maybe 3 hours yes some will require 5 hours as well some may require less than 2 so on an average i would say that 3 hours is what is required so to cover the entire syllabus it will take you somewhere close to 100 Uh, uh, odd hours, hundred to hundred and five, maybe let's just put it that way. But while you're simultaneously solving for this, or while you're simultaneously reading, your idea should be to solve as many questions as you possibly can at that particular point of time. The moment you are doing that, you have to look at sufficient questions. You have to have a. It it has to be directional, like I said. You can keep reading. Up, pura subject par lo. Then pure questions kar lo, and still you will find that you are not able to do justice during the exam. Why? Because you were directionally not right. so ultimately it boils down to how much of hours will will be a difficult thing to address but on an average if i may say every chapter core reading will not take you more than 2 and a half to 3 hours on an average so 100 hours goes there and another significant amount of effort energy needs to go towards those chapters uh, uh, those questions sorry so aapko questions bahut thoroughly examine kar rahe you have to solve a lot of questions uh, like that and you know you need ideally you should also be creating uh your own let's just say maps or your own mind maps or your own uh let's just say theoretical notes so that you have sufficient material available readily and handy with you which you can utilize uh, uh for your examinations that is also one thing that you need should be uh, that you should be prepared for so if if i may say total number of hours will, will probably be somewhere let's just say bare minimum should be 200 to 250 and uh, a sweet spot would probably be up to 300 300 se zyada i don't think it is required and that's like the total so if you spend like 3 hours a day for the next 100 days or 2 and a half hours a day for the next uh, 120 days that is what is uh, uh, required out of you initially comprehension thoda weak hoga initially you might not get a hang of a lot of things 
a lot of questions might seem like acha ye to ye puch raha hai but they were but once you go direction and once you are able to get a crack of things the next time you will find things are not as difficult as you initially thought them to be is it become better in understanding when the person is working i would say yes to an extent because ab man lo if you are working in life to main and i give you certain you know solvency related questions uh, uh, a question that comes from over there what is free capital and all of that how would you price and specifically with data and assumptions data assumptions and ye abhi main cover nahi kiya because it's slightly theoretical but people with working knowledge they find that data assumptions modeling it is very much linked to what they are doing uh, very much linked to you know their original sort of work and data assumption model is kind of a let's say it's like the uh, you know it's it's something which is usable everywhere you can use certain points from over there apply to a lot of your questions over here and get going with that so wo understanding aapko baad mein aayegi of course but to a certain extent yes i would say it will do you some help maybe 5 10% but not a lot because even if you have domain expertise let's just say you have 10 years of work experience in life a pension question is still new to you so in that sense uh, to some extent there will be help but it it's not like you work a lot as a result of which you know you'll you'll be able to clear this paper sadly that's not the case of course working a lot in life will help you with uh, uh, let's just say aap gi ho to aapka sp7 sp8 as a 3 वो ज्यादा इजी हो जाएगा अगर आप इन्वेस्टमेंट में काम कर रहे हो SP5, SP6, SA7, be easier, of course, because there you are not supposed to be tested on pension or anything else. Uh, so yes, working will help to a certain extent, but not a lot. Uh, I have cleared the core principle series and I'm planning to appear for SP8 as I'm working in the GI industry. Is it okay to appear for SP8 before CP1? Yes, you can appear for SP8 even before CP1. Absolutely fine. just in that case i would say that you know cp1 is like like i said again repeating it's a stepping stone isme thoda bahut gi bhi cover ho jayega but agar aap if you have been working in uh, gi and let's just say assuming that you have one or maybe one two year one year plus of experience in that case you can appear for sp7 or sp8 i have cleared cm cs cv paper except cs2 which is which i appeared for in april is it the right time to appear for cp1 i would say it is you it, it's your right at the sweet spot because agar if you are able to get cp1 burden out of the way and you can potentially talk to a lot of people who are already working they'll potentially tell you that you know what the pain of cp1 is so if that is the situation where you are at and of course you will have to judge for yourself how your cs2 went but really you know waiting till the examination doesn't really is, is the best utilization of your time for the next two months up you know you can cover 60 70% of the syllabus right so i would suggest that uh, and and if you assuming that you have you know done all the work that is required over there अगर आपका अगर आपका अंडरस्टैंडिंग सी एस टू का सफिशियंट यू विल फाइंड दैट यू कैन अपियर फॉर बोथ दीज पेपर एज वेल एंड एंड ऑफकोर्स गॉड फॉर बेड आई डोट वॉन्ट अपियर फॉर बोथ दीज पेपर बट द रीजन वाई लॉट ऑफ पीपल फील बेटर और नॉट शुड आई गो इज बिकॉज आर वेटिंग फॉर द रिजल्ट बिटवीन अप्रिल टू सेप्टेंबर फॉर आई एफ ओ ए गाइज इज यूजली द वर्स्ट टाइम वेर इन यू नो यू कैन वेट फॉर योर रिजल्ट सेप्टेंबर में यू कैन स्टिल वेट टिल डिसम्बर स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जनवरी एंड कवर अप थिंग्स एंटायरली इन द नेक्स्ट एंड हाफ मंथ नाउ इज द टाइम वेर इन यू टू पुश द थ्रॉटल results jaye bhad mein is 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 the thought process that you need to develop and you need to look at what you want to achieve in the next two or three years so if within that you can get done with cp1 it will ultimately you know uh, take a lot of burden away from your shoulders or should i add on any other papers as well agar cp1 aap first time dekh rahe ho i would not suggest cp1 ke sath add anything else maybe cp3 for that matter cp3 is very easy uh, easy nahi bolunga but it's 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 relative it consumes lesser time Is is what I would say. So maybe you can add CP three and if you have CP two, then you know, you, like I said earlier, uh, within the first year of your work or the first six months of your work, you can get done with uh, CP two as well, and then specialize based on whatever uh, this thing that you are getting. Uh, but really not. If you are in college, then SP five, leave any other SP level paper you don't need to do. Because if you are doing, let's like, say, you are doing GI, then you specialize in GI during college. and you end up getting a uh, this thing in life or something it it, it really isn't uh, uh, something that is said so sp5 or sp6 is potentially one sp level paper that you can do uh, while you are graduating or without starting your job and cp1 is probably one uh, such subject which you can do because it will ultimately do a lot of heavy lifting for you uh, i myself just to give you a context i uh, i i started teaching back in 2015 i started actuaries also back in 2015 I did my first six papers in. I started in June of uh, 2015. I gave my ASET, gave papers, and then I was working as well. There was some. Uh, uh, I I was actually doing uh, chartered accountancy as well. 
सो मेरा इंटर्नशिप चालू हो गया था सो फर्स्ट टाइम आई गेव अ फ्यू पेपर्स बट नेक्स्ट कपल ऑफ टर्म्स आई गिव मच बट देन उस टाइम जो सीटी सीरीज होता था एट सिटी वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स and a lot of people they said that you know you'll end up becoming over qualified and all of that as a result of which i thought that okay i should not be giving any more papers specifically uh, uh uh what do you call it i didn't even appear for cp uh, sorry ct8 which is your cm2 uh, as of now and uh, i i don't think that uh, there was a worse decision that i had made i if i had done uh, if, if if i were to have completed that back in the time i would probably have qualified right now and you know after qualifying as a ca i started a different job altogether i didn't uh get into this field i didn't so i i basically didn't give any more papers for the next 2 3 years i just gave like uh, you know your cb2 and uh, cp3 sorry cp2 and all of this but last matlab uh, uh, one and a half years back i restarted uh, uh, my journey and then i found that you know if i were to have done cp1 uh, or specifically cm2 back in the time it would have made my life a lot more easier so last time maine uh, uh, cm2 diya tha and uh this is not really the right time you know for you to because with job coming back and solving on pen and paper is is not that easy so ultimately the what it boils down to is it is suggested of course don't complete everything it's it's not even suggested not even possible for a lot of folks but be very comprehensive about what is the heavy lifting that you can do, that you can get done uh, as early as you possibly can within that heavy lifting you have to identify okay these are the papers that i can potentially get out of my way before i get started and then when you get started with your job and all you can uh, so that proper planning is probably required and for that only consult don't listen to your friends only consult people who have either qualified or who are near qualification or who have a few years of experience because they can tell you from their practical experience that you know uh, uh, this is what i probably should have done so i i would that's just you know one uh, another point that be very careful that you know you who you take your uh, suggestions from so that was kind of it and within cp1 just the closing remarks just a few reiterations of fact uh easy paper no i won't call it easy it's it's definitely difficult doable question mark yes of course it is doable is it too early to start is it too late to start i won't say uh, 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 it's early or late if you have done if bare minimum for a folk is to be done with cm1 cs1 and maybe cm2 these two three papers at least uh for someone who's already appeared for sp level papers as well because those folks also kind of appear for cp1 a lot of people you will find have cp1 as their last paper as well because it becomes a dreadful experience later on and ultimately it's about that comprehension which comes as a practice so it's not that difficult it's just that your efforts need to be directional specifically in cp1 and of course in other advanced level papers as well but cp1 mein zyada direction zaruri hai kyunki advanced level papers mein your experience will help and you have to just appear for 100 marks paper here you have to appear for 200 marks paper and both the papers will, will not be easy and both the papers you have to give your best the margin for error is less than 10 marks in two papers combined usse zyada ka aap mistakes afford hi nahi kar sakte and like i have showed you abhi maine dikha diya it might look like acha theek hai ye hai ye kar the moment it comes in your exam and that seven marker you have to appear and complete that in less than 12 or 13 minutes at that point of time cracking those codes is only possible if you have done sufficient homework otherwise exam anxiety or even if you are not anxious about exam the time constraint over there is itself sufficient for you to be able to you know you you have to think two or three times whether or not i'll be able to complete it so directional effort is what is absolutely required within cp1 you can keep reading the entire material from today till the exam still not do well you can keep solving all the questions still not do well it has to be well directed uh, and and only then you will find that you know your efforts will become effortless and you'll uh, get better results out of that so that was all that i had i think i've answered all the questions as well uh, thanks a lot for uh, joining in on us on, on on a saturday morning and uh, i i hope I, i i was able to you know be of some help uh and yeah wish you guys all the best for you know whatever papers you are going to be appearing in the uh uh you know next uh, uh, term or terms going forward